plus twins. No? Now let's derive it mathematically on the left side of this page. We have this differential equation, right? And uh, I think I need to add a constant to the derivative term in order to match uh, what we have. So I think I have to multiply a half over t onto the derivative term so that the equation I ended up is going to match the physical problem. So if I start from here, the, a useful technique to apply here is called the integration by parts. Okay, so integration by parts is basically the following. What I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to multiply onto this equation and delta u. So that's kind of the in the in physics is called the virtual display virtual displacement or something. Basically, imagine I'm uh, perturbing the solution u by a arbitrary function delta u without perturbing the boundary conditions which means my delta u has to be 0 at both 0 and 1. Now if I perturb the solution by delta u, I can multiply the perturbation by the differential equation which is satisfied by the solution u. And this has to be 0 for any arbitrary delta u, right? Okay, so now let's split this equation into two parts. Um, uh, I'm not sure about this constant half t yet. Um, we, we may go back and modify it. So the, the first part of this integral is uh, half t times delta u times the second uh, derivative of u dx. And the second part is integral of delta u times f dx. This has to be equal to zero, right? All right, okay, so here we have one function of x in a second order derivative and another function of x, delta u, without any derivatives. Is there any way to equalize the amount of differentiation we are taking to these two functions? Is there a way to take one of the derivatives that applies to this function and apply it to that function? That is integration by parts. By integration by parts is a general mathematical um, oh, yeah. technique of basically doing some uh, uh, magic, which is not that much magic if you consider how it comes from. So do we all know that if I integrate an arbitrary function h uh, over 0 and 1, sorry, if I don't integrate h but dh dx <laughs> over 0 and 1, what is it? Yeah, it's basically h1 minus h0, right? Everybody knows that. Now, do we know that if we integrate the product of two functions, f times g over uh, the derivative of the product over the same length, what is it? Yeah, it's just the f times g at the notation is 0, 1, but this means the function at 1 minus the function at 0, all right? No questions on this, right? Now, the magic comes just in splitting that derivative of the product into two terms. That is equal to integration of f times dg dx plus g times df dx, okay? And that is equal to here. So. This is basically where integration by parts comes from. If you find a undivided derivative on the function g and you want to move it to f, okay, you just uh, keep this on the left hand side and move that to the right hand side. Now what you have done is you converted the product of f and the derivative of g. 
into something that doesn't involve derivatives and something that has a derivative of, of f as opposed to g. Right, so that's another technique that is uh, almost always used in deriving the weak form of a differential equation. Okay, so, so in the future, let's say if you want to use a software like a console to solve any differential equations you want to solve, you need to derive the weak form so that uh, the software can solve it for you. And the way to derive it almost always involves integration by parts like that. So for example, here, from this uh, differential, equa differential equation, by multiplying the differential equation with a virtual displacement or a finite element. In, in physics, this is called the virtual displacement. Displacement In finite element jargon, this is called a test function, right? But the reason it's called a test function is you're kind of testing the correctness of this differential equation by multiplying the whole differential equation with that function and uh, the integral of which has to be zero. So if the differential equation is not satisfied at some point, for example, you can derive a test function that is zero almost anywhere else and one at that small location and uh, the whole equation wouldn't be true even if you integrate it, right? So that's why it's called a test function. It's kind of a use to test the correctness of this differential equation. Okay, so so what, what we have done is we multiply the differential equation with the test function and we split the terms and we apply integration by parts. Okay, so integration by parts on the first term is we want to, I thought I did blue. Okay, we want to move <coughs> the undesired derivative on the derivative of u, right, which is what made the second derivative into this delta u. So the first uh, uh, product is this, this we call boundary term. The boundary term for this is uh, half of t times delta u times the first derivative of u, okay, right, because that is the first derivative that lives within the second derivative at 0 and 1. And then I have a minus because when I move this term to the other side I get a minus. Minus integration over the same domain. Half of t is the same. And uh, the derivative is now on delta u. Okay. And uh, uh, I still have one derivative left on u. So this is how the first term became. I still have to add uh, uh, the second term. Okay. Now we have to apply the boundary condition for the test function or the virtual displacement. Delta u by definition is zero at the boundaries. That's regardless of what the boundary condition actually is. Even if the boundary condition u is fixed not at zero but one, my delta u still has to be zero at the boundaries, right? So uh, that's that's because my delta u is not supposed to change the boundary condition, change, right? So if you're fixed at somewhere, my, it's fixed, right? My delta u cannot be non-zero there. So this term is gone because of the boundary condition, okay? And what I got is the following. Um, right. I uh, I think uh, the constant I multiplied is actually shouldn't be that. Now I, I think I know what constant should I multiply. Instead of multiplying by half t, I should multiply by minus t. Okay. So so let's uh, let's change uh, let's change this. Uh, let me actually take a different color to my correction. Uh, this should be minus t. Okay, so instead of half t, I should have uh, uh, minus t here, and uh, uh, I should have uh, minus t over here. So that here, uh, in the boundary term, I have minus t, and uh, here I have 
plus and uh, instead of half t I have plus t all right okay so so now um, I have derived the weak form okay this is actually the weak form of the differential equation I have written down here 